today's video review, we're going to take a look at my kitbashed version of G.I. Joe Classified series, Footloose. So this is an action figure custom or kit bash that is very doable. With just the use of a hair dryer, you could take the figure apart, G.I. Joe Classified series parts, and mix and match pieces. Okay, so let's identify parts that I used for this action figure build. Okay, so the helmet that comes from G.I. Joe Classified Series Rock and Roll. The head and the neck comes from G.I. Joe Classified Series Ricondo. The body, the arms, and the glove sets comes from this set of Duke and the Ram Cycle. The legs, the man briefs, and the boots comes from G.I. Joe Classified Series Tiger Force Outback. Okay, so with regards to the accessories, so the rifle comes from Mark to Design. So it's going to be this B set. The belt comes from G.I. Joe Classified Series Rock and Roll. Now the attachments that comes from Vari G.I. Joe Classified Series parts and pieces. So this I think belongs to, um, I think, Stalker. Okay. So with the uh, pouches that comes from different G.I. Joe classified series or Marvel Legends parts, which, has, which is just loose in my accessories bin. The backpack comes from G.I. Joe classified series. This set from the Duke figure. The backpack that you see on the duke that is it the anti-tank weapon that comes from marvel legends walgreens punisher okay so other pieces that i failed to mention the backstrap harness or backpack harness comes from gi joe classified series tiger force outback and i think that is it so i think i already covered all of the parts and accessories for this build okay so let's take a look at where i really concentrated effort in really beautifying this action figure it is going to be on the head unit so to really mimic the original 3.75 inch Footloose, so I just studied or especially the card art of the uh, original figure and um, with regards to the length and how it is arra possibly arranged on the helmet of the action figure. So this is the rock and roll helmet unit and this is the Recondo head unit. So as you could see the obstacle really with um, achieving a nice proper fit because the head unit the head scalp of recondo is going to be a smaller piece than the helmet to achieve this kind of effect that it really sits nicely atop the head you have to feel the cavity of the helmet with stick glue so while the uh, glue is still nice and warm and very malleable just stick the head in and achieve proper alignment such as uh, this so once the glue settles it's going to be nice and filled and you're going to um, achieve this kind of effect that the helmet is fitting the head properly <laughs> okay now with regards to the chin straps so you have two options either you cut the chin straps or you could glue it to the other side this way so you have a really nice and secure helmet for foot loose so instead of cutting it off I, in, I opted for gluing it together 
so it's going to be quite um, short right now so what you have to do is to take out your uh, blow dryer or hair dryer apply high heat on this strap section and once this is nice and soft just pull it out this way to stretch out that plastic so once you achieve proper length that is the time that you glue the two pieces together and it's going to be really nice and easy because you have already lented this strap piece okay so as for the camouflage um, pat, um, helmet cover very nice and simple very easy so it just comes from whatever green shirt that you could take hold on I just so happened that I have this on board so I've been using this with my kit bash action figures so nice green shirt that you could cut into pieces and then glue them on top of the helmet now it's going to be really tricky doing the glue thing or super glue thing on top of that helmet because if you stick it with your finger you're going to leave finger or uh, print fingerprint marks so you have to use a tool such as this um, just apply a little bit of glue here and stick it with something like a chopstick or anything or a spatula even something like this that you could um, nicely secure that piece of cloth onto the helmet piece and it's not going to leave any rough marks so those marks that you see that are dark those are the glue marks actually <laughs> so afterwards just take out your any type of green marker pen that you have on board and if there's um, glue that uh, has hardened and it's colored white just uh, paint it green so that's what i did to some sections of this helmet that had super glue poking out but it was really nuts because i was really careful with how i attached the um, cloth pieces to the helmet so just um, cut out right sizable amounts and then with the scissor trim it out later on okay so other things that i did to the upper half or the the body and the arms of the action figure i'm um, not really much it's just going to be on the collar and the sternum of the action figure as you could see on the duke figure that sports a red collar and white shirt so what i just did was to um, take out those painted parts with a nail polish remover and repainted this section that's supposed to be a white shirt so i painted it black well very simple thing just nail polish black nail polish so nothing really fancy so instead of putting um, camo stripes or camo pattern on the BDU, the battle dress uh, uniform or shirt, I opted not to do that because it's going to dampen out the figure. So when I place this on my display case, it's going to be lost because of how it is um, painted or colored. So just nice and green with a little bit of camo pattern on the pants i'm already okay with that okay so with regards to this section so that is a scaled down section of the anti-tank weapon from marvel legends from the punisher so it's going to miss this section so instead of having the whole um, 
la, la, uh, anti tank weapon hanging on the backpack of the action figure it's going to um, it's going to sport the collapsed version so I just cut off this piece and that piece and glued this black piece to that end so as you could see shortened out section and I um, exacto knife that um, peg and repositioned it to another um, portion of the light anti-tank weapon so how is it stored on the backpack of the action figure so just take hold of the backpack so I drilled a hole on this section and repositioned the peg which is the original piece so I placed it on this section so I have the option of either using a fully retracted um, light anti-tank weapon or a collapsed one that is um, easily transportable and you could attach it to the backpack so no need to apply straps or any type of um, holding mechanism to the backpack so I could either have the figure with this attached on and he could hold on to this piece or just display the action figure this way with the M16A1 feels like your G1 foot loose with the right attachments the right cover and the right color for the shirt or the uniform So in the shorts video that I made for this action figure, I had a different rifle. So it was sporting this and it was sporting the whole light anti-tank weapon, which was pegged to the back of the action figure. But personally, um, so those are choices that you could make something if you want a quite a modern version of Footloose so you could give him a weapon like this from Action Force Valorverse with this attachment on the fully um, retracted version or you could have him displayed like this a more traditional looking um, Footloose action figure with a full size or full length M16A1 rifle and the light anti-tank weapon which like the 3.75 inch figure was uh, smaller something like that you could even give footloose a different m16 a1 rifle something that comes with the bayonet <laughs> So if you like this kit bash or custom video review of Footloose, like, comment, and subscribe to help me grow my channel. And see you on the next action figure or custom action figure review.